There is a crisis in this country that few people are talking about. It's been brewing for well over a decade now, and in the next 10 years, it's going to boil over and put the entire country at risk. In this video, I'll explain what this crisis is, how we got into this mess, and how we may be able to get ourselves out. So stick around. There is a shortage of skilled tradespeople throughout the U.S. economy. Looking for a job? Well, the U.S. has plenty, but not enough people to fill them, apparently. We are staring down the barrel of an urgent nationwide skills crisis. For the first time in our history, we have more job vacancies out there than we actually do. I would hire anybody if they didn't have any experience at all. It's rampant across the country. We have a serious deficit. It's very frustrating. We are in a crisis. There is a profound shortage of skilled tradespeople in this country. This includes people like plumbers, electricians, pipe fitters, mechanics, carpenters, and others. These are people who actually do things and build things. This shortage affects everyone, not just people who are remodeling their kitchens or bathrooms or need a mechanic to work on their car. When you can't find enough workers to finish basic infrastructure like that school or that highway project, or perhaps for critical projects like the new hospital, you have to pay double to find enough workers to finish it on. Time. This shortage makes everything cost more, it makes everything take longer, and it drags down the entire economy. According to some studies, the average age of skilled workers is 50, and for every one skilled worker who's entering the trades, five skilled workers are leaving. 75% of companies say that it is currently difficult to hire people in the skilled trades, and with many industries and jobs expected to grow in the next five years, there are going to be millions of openings. So how did we get here? Well, the short answer is that the demand for people in the skilled trades is outpacing the supply of qualified people to fill those roles. The reasons why are what we're going to explore. First, and this is huge, there is a stigma against tradespeople. They're looked down on as lower class. This is something that I saw myself when I was in high school over 20 years ago. The high school guidance counselor would tell all the popular kids that he liked to go to college and then all the rejects to go to a trade school. A white collar professional career was seen as the only viable option and only the failures would end up in a trade school. What's funny about that is that some of the most successful people I know got their start in the trades. They worked hard and built a business business, hired employees, and are now making a fortune. Besides that, trade school is far more affordable and you start making more money sooner than you would with a white collar professional career. Also, the average college graduate has over $40,000 in debt, which is something that a person in the trades generally would not have. Simply put, young people are not entering the skilled trades because they don't realize how beneficial it can be. Many young people are pushed into traditional college degrees, believing that they will lead to a higher paying job and have more career opportunities. And while that may be true for some people, there are many others that are saddled with debt and stuck in dead end jobs, not realizing that a job in the skilled trades often offers higher wages and more job security than a job with a college degree. The truth is that the skilled trades are just as noble as other professions like doctors and lawyers. And I guarantee you that you will agree with me when you really need a plumber. It looks like you got a leak. Could you start fixing it pretty soon? The basement is getting awfully flooded. Some plumbers, by the way, make as much money and sometimes more than some doctors and lawyers. The second challenge is that construction is a boom bust business. When times are good, they can be really good. And when times are bad, they can be so bad that people leave the skilled trades for other jobs. Then when the economy comes back and those people are needed again, they're just not there. They've already moved on. That happened after the 2008 housing crisis. Both residential and commercial construction projects dried up and there simply wasn't enough work to go around. That may be repeating right now as many people think that we're headed for a recession. Although it looks like it may be different this time, as few people think that construction will be hit quite as hard. Regardless, it is tough to keep good people during that boom bust cycle. And when we talk about solutions a bit later, I'll give you my thoughts on how we can deal with this one. The third challenge is that working in the trades is really hard. It can be physically exhausting. You sometimes have to work outside in super hot conditions or in freezing cold conditions. Most of the time you have to wake up early or travel long distances. There can be long hours sometimes and the bathroom situation is less than desirable. That's enough to make some people shy away from a job in the trades. Now, one of the things that I hear a lot today, especially from older generations, is that kids today just don't want to work. Now, I get the sentiment, and there certainly are some lazy people out there, but I don't think that laziness is the norm by and large in younger generations. I think that young adults would love to work and would work hard if they were given the right incentives. As an example, I was out to lunch recently and snapped this picture. They're paying $24 an hour plus a bonus to work at Panda Express. Other places like McDonald's and Walmart are paying people off the street similar amounts. 
accounts. An Amazon warehouse worker can make almost $30 an hour. The starting wages for most skilled trades is much lower than that and have not kept up with inflation. At the end of the day, it's really an economic decision. Why would someone go in and work a much harder job in much more difficult conditions for much less pay? It's a simple economic calculation. Now that last point on pay is probably just a temporary condition. As skilled laborers become more and more scarce, companies will become more desperate and out of necessity pay more. Also, the longer that you work in the trades, the more money you tend to make. You get better at your job and faster at your job, and many times you can go into business for yourself and make your own hours. Again, one more reason to go into the trades. The problem is that the barrier at the start where people are making much less money is really difficult to overcome. And so people will go to those easier jobs where they can make more money more quickly. Easy money. Another challenge is the toll that working in the trades has on the body. It can be dangerous and it can be hard and there are a lot of people who have to get out of the trades earlier than they would like to because they physically can't do it anymore. Better health insurance would go a long way to helping in that space. Now while it may cost more, employers really have to see the benefit in keeping their best employees healthy. Now before I move off this point, I just want you to consider something. While office jobs generally do not rank the highest on the list of dangerous jobs, we're learning now that office jobs can also be dangerous. Sitting for long periods can lead to higher rates of obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and heart attacks. Recent studies have shown that sitting longer than six hours increases your risk of death for all-cause mortality by 13% compared with sitting four hours or less. With sitting more than eight hours, the risk increased to 19%. There's something to be said for that. So we have talked a lot about uh, the problems with the trades and why there is such a crisis. So what can be done about it? Well, first of all, I think that we should encourage more kids to go into the trades, including your own kids. Not as a last resort, but as a real career path. Be honest with them about the challenges, but also help them realize that there is a bright future in the trades. Next, I think that the government could do more to encourage young adults to go into the trades through scholarships and grants to attend trade schools. Now, think of that instead of giving a 20-year-old a $100,000 student loan to get a degree in underwater basket weaving. A philosophy major. Mm -hmm. Now, what can you do with a philosophy? Major. You can think deep thoughts about being unemployed. <laughs> Making education and certification easier to obtain will also help out in that boom bust cycle and people can be more flexible and move into the trades when there is a high demand. Next, I think that companies can do a lot more to make working conditions better. More vacation time, better facilities, better health insurance, and the like. Now, some people may say that you know companies don't have enough money for that or kids just need to toughen up, but you have to remember that you're competing with other companies that will give those incentives. And if you don't change with the times, you're gonna get left behind. Next, there needs to be better starting pay. Now, I know that budgets are tight in construction, especially with material costs that have gone up so high in recent years, but again, if you wanna retain good talent, you have to do what it takes. And let's be honest, some of these construction companies make obscene amounts of money and could easily give some of that back. If they did that, they would be able to attract and retain more top tier talent. They'd be able to train people much better and have them stick around, and it would give them a long-term competitive advantage, especially as this crisis is going to get worse. Now, one thing that I have not addressed is demographics. This is a huge challenge for many countries around the world and the US is no exception. People are having fewer children and what that means is that the future generations are going to get smaller. And that means that there will be even more co competition for even fewer workers. Now, maybe there will be some automation or robots or new construction techniques that can pick up some of the slack but many of the skill trades will not be replaced by automation in the same way that some office workers will be. There will be a need to build and repair the aging infrastructure in this country, and because of those demographics, the pool of people to do that is much smaller. So how do you fix that? Um, that's, that's a tough one. Younger people are not having as many kids because times are hard. Inflation has hit hard and salaries for the most part have not kept up. People are also waiting much later in life to have kids, which means that their window to have children is much shorter and in turn they have fewer kids. So what do you do about that? How do you fix that? Well, you can pass laws like child tax deductions that make things easier, but that really won't move the needle, at least not enough to make up for the difference. What we need right now is more immigration. Now, I know that immigration is a hot button political issue for a lot of people, and I don't normally venture into politics in my videos, but I don't think that immigration has to be such a controversial topic. Now, I'm all for securing our borders and making sure that we're protecting ourselves from criminals and gangs and drug dealers 
workers and the like, but we also need more workers and they're there, they're ready and they want to come here. We should reform our broken immigration system so that we can welcome those who have the skills that we need and who are willing to work. Immigration has gone down since COVID and is currently at the lowest level in nearly 20 years. And as baby boomers get older, we need people to take care of them. We need people to fix the aging infrastructure. We need people to fill that demographic gap. And that is what immigration can do for us. So how do we fix this? Well, there's a lot that we can do. We can encourage more young people to enter the trades. We can improve pay and conditions. We can remove the stigma for trade work and encourage immigration for skilled workers to make up the difference. So what are your thoughts? Do you work in the trades and are you seeing what I'm talking about or are you seeing something completely different? Please leave me a comment and, and let me know. Um, or maybe do you disagree with some of my solutions or do you have something else in mind? Again, please leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, there's often a lot of really great conversations that take place in the comments of my videos and I really appreciate that. Um, there's also a lot of things that I haven't even touched on like the impact uh, for good or bad of unions. Again, I'd love to hear what you guys think on that topic. So thanks again for watching. I hope that you've learned something from this video. I hope that it's caused you to think about some things. And if it did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next one.